All right, let's just let's just dive in. Um, let me do a little ground rules. First, first off, I think everyone knows me. This is this is a, uh, a webinar really geared towards existing clients. Um, you know, working towards that May 14th deadline. Uh, we want to make sure that everyone's taken care of. There's anything that we can do to help you, you know, reach that finish line. Uh, you know, that's really the, the whole point of all of this. So. We can unmute later, you know, later on, but we're going to start off with just having people muted just to follow along. And then, um, you know, you can request to be unmuted, I believe. And we'll you can do it that way. You can use the chat throughout the, the whole time. Um, but yeah, really just wanted to uh, give a brush up for those of you that have already used the tech in the, in the past. And then um, for those that haven't, just walk through the final steps to get the data brought together uh and submitted to HUD. So let's roll. And we are gonna we are gonna record this. So if you know the things you need to revisit, you can record it. If you want to share it with some colleagues, you can do that too. So uh, no no worries on that side of it. So uh we're gonna go through some common data cleaning steps, just some high level things like identifying dupes and extra how do you extrapolate and, and maybe some fill in some missing um pieces with um uh, you know, some missing data, don't know, refuse, that kind of thing. And when you, as you can, um, hopefully a lot of that's already been done. Um, locations is another one that comes up where you might have some straggler surveys, um, especially for those that were manually entered, um, where they put the address in, didn't maybe put your town, and there's a lot of main streets out there, that kind of thing. What do you need to do to get the, the HUD results compiled? I mean, the results compiled and then submitted to HUD. We have a new tool that we're excited to share. Um, so. You know, stay tuned for that. We'll be going through that. Um, a big part of how we've been able to um, have success in this area of, in making a difference is really based on the feedback that we get from clients. I mean, this is probably our eighth or ninth year doing this work and using mobile tech for the, for the point in time count. Uh, and we just want to keep getting, you know, better at it. And, you know, a big part of that is getting your feedback. So um, please, you know, we like constructive criticism, um, you know, we can take it. Uh, so what went well, what we, we can do to improve, we'll focus on that. So be thinking of that too, um, while, we, while we work up towards that. And then um, we are gonna share a little bit of a preview of Show the Way. So Show the Way is a sister app to Counting Us. Um, I say sister app um, in the sense that, uh, maybe it's a brother app, I don't know, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, it's, it's related in the sense of GPS enabled surveys, but it's ongoing data capture for street outreach. Uh, and, and that same information can, can be used to support your point in time count. And I'll, we'll cover that uh, for a few minutes. And then uh, what you're going to do with the data after you've submitted to HUD, you know, how are you going to make it actionable? We have some tools to help help with that too. Um, you know, ideally we're trying to affect change here. So if it means um, identifying particular areas of weakness that they might need attention, you know, calling out some areas where you could potentially, uh, you know, Ideally, try to get some more funding to, to, to help. Um, you know, sharing the, what's going on to, to other people in your community in a way that's not just numbers on a page. So we'll talk about that too. So diving in. So report clean, data cleaning and reporting. So there are different functions, and we'll have, we'll share this slide deck too. And all these are links. But what we can do is, is and we, there are links to the FAQs on how to, you know, how to do these different functions. Um, you know, for the sake of time and, you know, be conscious of your time. Um, again, we, I'm, we can go through some of these things and we can spend more time people have questions, but, you know, the high level is, these are the ideas, you know, that we kind of, we'll go through some of them, but we can spend more time on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Um, you can review the guidance, whatever works. Um, and on a one-on-one -on -one basis too, I'm gonna emphasize again, that the help desk is here for you. So it's, you know, if you, if you ever want to, to reach out you know, it's help desk at syntax solutions com, and um, you know we can work through you know through some of these things one on one with you as well. So response tagging, what you're seeing in this video clip is basically the the, the way you can you can assign tags to existing surveys. Um, you, you know this this is like a, a tool that really is it's not overly prescriptive. Um, you know. What we're trying to accommodate here is a way to categorize the data in a way that you know provide to you the way to categorize the data if you want it to. You don't have to go to this level, um, 
but there might be times where, you know, I, I just really want to see, um, you know, data for everyone that's, you know, depending on your local questions, maybe, you know, you, you can, you know, things might need follow up things that, you know, maybe you want to tag them that way. Um, you know, but you can create your own tags and um, you can assign those tags to, to people. So, um, and, and again, there's some examples in this demo, it's pretty uh, quick, but it's, you know, the idea is to say, you know, whatever it is I'm trying to do or accomplish, it's another way that you can flag records. And these same functions, because it, it does share the same uh, database currently with show the way, um, you know, maybe some of this is more in, in line with, um, you know, ongoing street outreach, like the idea of needing follow up or someone needing documentation, um, um, whatever it might be. Uh, maybe it's someone's a you know a high risk person that you know you don't want to approach by yourself. Um, there are different ways you can use tags, um, but you know, not knowing your individual circumstances for the pit, you know. These could be too. If you made a data quality issue, you know, need to follow up. Need, needs, you know, you know, to follow up with a volunteer. You, know, you can use tags for, for things like that. You're just doing a quick, um, you know, or maybe you're saying it's ready. You're know, ready to go. So, anyway, this is an example of, of that that functionality. I just wanted you to know it does exist in case you have those local needs. Uh, the extrapolation. So there is the HUD extrapolation tool. Um, if you wanted to extrapolate within the app. You can do that too. Um, and really what it's doing is, you know, you're basically are able to, when you go to run that report, and again, when you run the report, you can just click run report and select it, you know, to go over the whole COC, or you can do it off of the filters that you've already applied. So if you want to run it, you know, this for just for veterans or just for certain, you know, sub geography within your region, you can do that. Um, so, you know, in this case, you'll see that you can do it all for all, all records or filtered records, and you can apply these filters. Um, but if you choose to run with demographic extrapolation, it's going to be the similar report output, but you're going to have an ex extra column in here where it's actually creating an estimated count that is accounting for some of those blanks and missing um, records. So if some, you know, missing, don't know, refuse, you know, um, you know, we need to, you know, when you go to submit the HUD, they want everything to, to, to total up. So um, if you serve 45 clients, you know, the, the sum of the parts should equal 45. Um, in this case, they didn't, you know, in this case, it was supposed to be 50 um, and there needs to be an estimated count. Actually, in this case, it should be 56. Um, so as long as those response rates of what you have gathered are ideally above 80%, and it, that's kind of like a good baseline to say, yes, we have enough information to extrapolate. Um, so if you didn't have that, there would be color coded here um, to say, yeah, it's pretty low. You might not have enough to, to, to uh, estimate uh, for the entire population based on what you, what you have gathered. So that's that piece. Um, you know, as far as compiling the results, there's a new feature inside. Um, this is a kind of exciting thing. And, and um, some of the communities, I remember in particular, uh, North Carolina last year, um, and you have this, all these different data sources, you know, this is the recipe for creating the point in time count means that you have to go after the people, you know, let's go after all our HMIS providers, make sure that data is tight, um, in HMIS and you can run, you know, ideally your HMIS can run a point in time report. Um, if it can't, um, we have a warehouse called homeless data, um, and you know, if it can't, or you don't trust it, let's put it that way, um, we have a warehouse that can produce um, the, the point in time data um, through the HUD comma separated variable exchange format data comes out of your your system, goes into the warehouse, and the warehouse can produce the point in time report with drill downs and all, you know, some edit checks and just to make sure that the numbers are tight. And then we have things like data quality scorecards to make sure the capacity utilization looks good too. Um, you know, if you say you have 80 beds, well, it should be relatively close to that 80 of how many people are enrolled the night at the point in time and throughout the year. Um, otherwise, you've got, you know, if it's 150, maybe you have problems exiting clients out. If it's like 40, then maybe you need to take beds offline or if people haven't enrolled, then entering data properly. 
So anyway, that's that's the idea of, of using a warehouse is other supporting tools that you might not have in your in your core HMIS. But whatever your system is, and maybe it comes right from HMIS. Um, we have an Excel-based tool for domestic violence providers. Um, we, you know, because of the Violence Against Women's Act, we don't want to be moving data back and forth um, for victims. Um, we want to keep it within the confines, ideally, of that provider. So the idea of an Excel-based tool, which is free to download from our website, is that they would download the, the, the Excel tool, key in the information about who was served that, for that night, and then all they would be sending back is not the Excel tool, the results file. So this point in time results file exchange format, it's similar uh, in concept to what you do when you're submitting uh, this, you know, results to SAGE for APR. So it's, a, it's, a, it's literally just the numbers that come out of the report. Um, you know, if everyone's sending you PDFs or, you know, um, you know, of their reports locally, and then it's up to you to rekey everything, that's room for human error. And it's also just tedious. Um, so when we've had to, to support communities that have two or 300 providers, plus the DV providers, you know, in HMIS, plus the DV providers, plus the unsheltered count, uh, plus the non HMIS providers that are using counting us, um, there's just too many moving parts. So by bringing it together in a common result format, um, and we can show you how to download, you know, create that, those formats. Um, and it's all on our website too, and we can give you guidance on where to go. Um, with that, it makes it super easy to say, produce the final report. And um, I, one thing I, I do want to bring up, well, oftentimes in communities we work with, they say, hey, we really want this data written back to HMIS because we're going to do the report there. And, you know, something to, while it sounds great in concept, um, something to, to realize is the difference in the kind of data that we're capturing for the point in time versus what's called longitudinal data for HMIS. So starting point um, with the point in time count, you don't necessarily even have um, names and dates of birth and you know all the, the, the personally identifiable information that you have in HMIS to even create a record. You know, you know, a lot of our communities, they, they have more observation tallies than they have um, client surveys. So that's a starting point. The other side of it is for one day, you know, for one night is for the point, is for the point in time where HMIS is, you know, it spans a period of time. So it's a different type, you, know, you don't have the enrollment concept um, that you have when you have an HMIS. So um, because of those data nuances, um, the idea of being able to bring data together in the aggregate, um, it, it accomplishes the same goal of being able to compile a finished report without having to try to get data out of um, the command center for a census and then, you know, incorporating it into HMIS that's more of a long picture. So anyway, that's that piece. Um, and I can, and again, I'll, I'll show you some of the things in the, in the command center, um, you know, if you wanted to, to pause um, the next slide is, is really going to be based on your feedback. Um, I welcome people to unmute. Um, it is a, you know, pretty small and intimate crowd. And I think we're amongst friends and clients. So, um, you know, if people want to share their, their feedback on, on what went well, what we could do better, you can use chat too, if you want. Um, and if you don't have any suggestions right now, and you can come up later on, you can always just fire us an email. Um, you know, the team at SimtechSolutions.com, and then we can make note of something and that will help us prioritize what to focus on uh, for next year. So um, I'll pause for a minute and see if anyone wants to come off mute. I'm going to see if I can, I can unmute everyone, do that too, um, or you can use the chat. And you can, and you, I think you can be asked to be unmuted as well. Let's see. Let me check out the chat real quick. It's quiet in here, so I guess it's uh I, I guess we're doing our job. I don't know. Um and if, if you feel like you know, not feel like sharing, um, we can go right into the 
me to the review. Um, so anyway, you go, and we can always save time for that later. And if I'm missing you and you're trying to unmute yourself, you can put yourself in the chat and say, you know, I got a comment and we can, we can do it that way too. All right, all right, moving on. So I'm gonna try to show a little bit of an excerpt of Show the Way now. It kind of explains really what we're working on. level ongoing data capture really aimed at supporting street outreach in their work you know on a day-to-day -day basis but using that information that's curated throughout the year the locations the information that you do gather um and you know part of that too the information is gathered by a trusted um you know party in the sense and also that, that has had a chance to build a rapport uh with the client over the course of the year so some of the more sensitive questions um, the, that I always found difficult asking people when I just met them um, related to family conditions, domestic violence experience, um, and some of the community-based questions. Um, some of that information can be pulled year-round um, by someone that's actually had a chance to get to know someone um, versus a you know brand new volunteer just walked in to a front night and is you know asking some some pretty hard questions. So there's that, and it's also beyond you know, that, some of the functionality within uh, Show the Way really is aimed at trying to move people towards housing and, and helping them, you know, but, but starting off by helping them where they are. So, um, you know, it's really focusing on in the human-centered design, which basically means um, we're, we're trying to address the, the, you know, the person's needs um, and building a relationship there is a starting point uh, and doing the data capture that we need to do for HUD as a byproduct of it, but not leading with the, the, the data capture for HUD. It's really leading with the relationship, building that relationship, uh, helping the person out where they are, um, and then building up that record over time that you can both use for HMIS for street outreach, but also for, you know, to support your point in time count. Uh, we are going to be doing a webinar on May 25th at one o'clock Eastern time. We will be sending out, um, you know, just to a, a select group of, of counting us clients and a few prospects that have, have mentioned interest uh, in the tech uh, for Show the Way. Um, so it's going to be a really of a um, an early release. Um, you know, you know, we're not not for the masses. Um, you know, for our for our trusted compadres um, to check out the work, give some feedback. We still have some some opportunities to uh, add some additional features, uh, but we've already done soft launches of of the product. And um, the, the, the winds are already coming in and that we're helping people get housed, um, which is awesome. And we're also helping support some family reunification um, work through a partnership with Miracle Messages. Uh, so it's not just getting people to, to community-based permanent supportive housing, but actually getting them reconnected to family members um, that, you know, so that come, it comes with the relationships of, um, and not just, you know, the four walls and you know, services. Um, so. That's pretty exciting. I mean, I'm really, I'm looking forward to sharing and um, I'm stoked that we've been able to help some people out. So, um, so that's that piece. Uh, the other side of it is once we have all your data submitted, what are we gonna do with it? Um, if you go onto the point in time.info website and you scroll all the way down, you'll see that the, the community performance 
uh, the National Point in Time Trend Dashboards, and you'll be able to find your community uh, once you select your state, and then you, your COC, you'll be able to find your, your community and, and your community's trends uh, over the years using the data that's been published to HUD. Um, but what, what that's missing is uh, obviously your 2021 data. And you can wait a year until HUD publishes it. Hopefully it'll be shorter this year. Um, or um, again, we'll show you the slide deck. Um, it has, has the links to everything. Um, you can submit the data to us. We'll update the trends. Uh, for you, and then you'll have that visual content that you can use in any press pieces you're doing to, to say this is where things are and, and were. Uh, here's our trends. Here's you know, and it's just things that you uh, can glean from the data. You, you, know, you can focus on and balance out the writing. Um, you know, with some some pictures. You know, some people. The idea is to get people. You know, people learn differently. And some people really like the imagery, um, and it helps tell the story. So um, we want to help give that to you so you're not doing it on your own. And, uh, you know, it actually helps us nationally to know where the trends are going by having some early submissions of data um, to say of the data sets that we do have, um, we're seeing, a, you know, a 10% increase um, or, or whatever it might be um, versus waiting a full year to take action, um, especially in, in light of COVID, because I think that's going to, that's, we're in a, in a new period and I think it's important that we try to get the results out um, of the communities that, that actually did the pit, try to get them out sooner than later because a lot of other communities didn't do it. Um, so we've got some gaps and, you know, there's a time to, to take action, um, especially with the, the rescue plan and, and funding allocations being decided. So there's that. So time for any questions. Um, we can we can open it up for that, and we can go into the command center. Um, but any questions of what we've we've shared so far? And I will add right here um, the links to our our resources, both from the HUD point in time, as well as our own internal resources to support the work of getting um, the results back out to the HUD. So um, I can I can jump over. At, you know, any any time. Let me see if there's any things in the chat. Chat's still quiet. All right. Um, so everyone's taking things in, I guess. So I'm going to jump over while we're doing that. And if anyone has any questions, feel free to bring them up. Um, ah, so Debbie. So if I'm understanding correctly, we export our data from HMIS. So and so let me show you, let's go through that piece. Um, it's, so if you were to use the warehouse, Debbie, the homeless data uh, warehouse, then, then you can export in the CSV format. Um, and then we'd upload into the warehouse to produce those point in time figures. But let's go through the example of getting the data out in a way that can be brought together um, with the other results files. Uh, so, so good question. So I am going to minimize, actually, I can even just click on this because it should bring me over to, so I'll click on here, the Syntech Resources page. And I brought it over here. All right, so I'm moving, I have two monitors in case it's not obvious. Um, so. The guidance, I'm going to move my screen over here so it looks like I'm looking at you. And if I were to scroll down, we're now in the universe of preparing the, the aggregating the, uh, the final report. So this link right here, how, I, how can I aggregate the unsheltered and sheltered counts gathered using counting ounce results from HMIS and the point in time report generation tool? So, and again, the FAQs, it's all under support, support FAQs. So um, if you, and then this, this piece is right in here. If I click on this, this is a look familiar. We just covered this in the slide deck. Um, and it basically talks about how to get it all together. So the piece that we're missing, so if you're using Service Point, now we have talked to Service Point, um, to our Dewell's guy, um, about generating this results file. Um, I don't believe they have it done yet. Um, Advocacy always helps. This is the, the results file format is explained here. Um, and, you know, this is just, I get to give you a look. 
this is what a vendor ideally would be able to code to to produce and these are the columns and this is what it would look like it's just a long list of of you know, you know all these color columns of data with, with the numbers to go into them um so you can always share that back with your vendor um of course now i've got this in the way uh, my apologies so there we go but without that you know and you're not because I, I can i can hear some of you uh saying well my vendor's not going to do that um there's not time for that um if you can generate the point in time report out of your software then the other option is to just use this point in time results file generation tool and it's an excel based tool and all you're going to be doing is you would open this up and again it's a two screen thing so um and I click to open it. There it is. And I can open it. Actually, I actually wanted to extract that first. Um, and you're, all you'll be doing is you're putting in the data point in time count in your COC code. And you would key in the results from the point in time report that comes out of your HMIS. And then once you're done with putting in the, these figures, you just type them in the, in the white columns. You go back here and you click export results. And what that's going to do is it's going to create a results file. And that results Matt, file, yeah. Uh, are you looking at the Excel tool right now? Because we can't see that on our end. Oh, okay, apologies. Yep. Two screens. I did it again. Thanks, Nathan. Um, so um, again, sorry. Thank you, Nathan. It, this is the Excel tool that I unzipped, and you're going to be putting in the, the facts and figures here from your point in time report. And then once you're done going through these tabs, you click Export Results, and that's going to create a results file. And all it is is the numbers from from your HMIS. And again. If you take the numbers from your HMIS and do this, you know, within counting us or the command center, you have the ability to create this, the same thing without having to rekey anything, the same results file. And you put the same, all these results files in the same place. And so in this case, um, I'm going to show you an example of, we dropped them all in a folder here um, that basically has different results files that come out of here's your sheltered unsheltered from um, maybe maybe this one is from counting us um, or from HMIS and here's just from counting us and this might be from the DV tool uh, whatever those different sources are they're now all in one place and if you were to look at what's in here um, just again so you can see it's one row of data with different results um, and these are just the numbers for from that source so then the next step would be once you go back and you know you have them gathered uh, the next step is to go back into the command center all right and this is a brand new feature um is it it might need some help where is that button on this because it is a new feature to me too it's admin that new admin panel we put in okay yeah all right thank you uh so there's a new admin panel right here and then if I click compile pit results. All right. And of course I should put this on my desktop because I'm like 12 levels deep. And just click upload. So I browse for it and I upload. And it's going to be pulling all those results files together. So the ones from HMIS, the ones from Counting Us, the ones from DV Tool, uh, pulling them all together. And it might take a little minute. And what you'll see when you're done is. So 
concept and it looks like this. It takes all the data and now ties it all together. So then you have the, fun, the you know, a report that you can say, okay, these are all my figures from the different sources. And then the, the last step from, from here is to put it through the extrapolation, the extrapolation tool. But, but this is a way to gather the data from the different sources. And um, if I were to unhide the data sheet, you can see, actually that's not the data sheet um, that I was looking for. It might actually, it might actually be on hidden by default uh, towards the end report results oh, over there. Okay, okay, yep, there it is. Um, there's all the different sources brought together. So it's just an easier way than rekeying a bunch of, of data, um, you know, and you can still go that way, but you know, it's a little error prone where this way it does it all the work for you and brings it all together. So, and, and again, this is all pre-recorded. We have some guidance and FAQs, and you know, you can look at the FAQ to walk you through it. And then the help desk is here to back you up too. Um, so it's a little bit beyond really just doing providing mobile tech for the street count, um, but we kind of want to go beyond that and make sure that we're helping out from beginning to end on the, on the point in time. All right, so any questions on that piece? And Debbie, did that answer your question? And again, we can be happy to follow up too if, if you need more. Okay, thanks, all right. Okay, all right, very good. All right, so we're good there on the chat. All right, so let's spend a little time in the command center talking through some of your local setup issues, um, potential issues. So high level, you come into the, into the you know the command center. This all looks familiar to people. When you see these, you know, on the side, the demographics, high level. Um, you know, if there's opportunities to clean up some of these, you know, it's not a bad thing to do, um, but some of it just might not be doable. Um, so you can click on the drill down to see things and follow up with people, um, you know, on things like gender, um, you know, I know some communities that will make the leap based on names and some communities aren't comfortable doing that. Um, that's not up to us. We're just letting you know that, that, that you know, However, there are ways that you can manage the data um, and, what, and it all depends on what you're comfortable with. On the responses, you know, I, I think this, you know, this one from a demo perspective, because we have demo results coming from all over the place, it's kind of tricky, um, you know, but your response map ideally would look like your continuum of care and not be, you know, North America and South America and, and everything. So, um, but, you know, one of the things you can do is assume like, my continuum care was somewhere here down here in Texas, and this was one, you know, straggler survey. I could open this record up, and then I could change the location of this however I wanted um, by just tapping change location. I could put it in, or I could move it on the map, and and then save it. So that that comes up a fair amount. And then beyond that, again on the list view, um, I'm going to move this off just to hide people's names real quick. Um, let me try to do that. So, pardon a second. I'm just going to go to list view and then just hide the names of, or at least the phone numbers of the of the people that submitted. Okay, coming back. And what I did there, you, you can do, you know, as well, you know, you can always change the columns of what you want to show. So if you're doing your own demo and you wanted ahead of time to, to you know, to hide names, you, it's pretty easy to do that. Uh, but in here, going back, um, you know, on these filters, you can look for some unknowns. You can filter by those kind of criteria if you want to get things tighter. Um, if, if you do need to change records, again, it's just opening here things up and then, and then fixing things to whatever you need to fix. Um, but let's assume you're already at that point. You know, the next kind of one of the steps that you could, you could still be doing, if you haven't done it already, is doing the find duplicates feature. Um, you know, 
on this it's, it's you know because this might have already been done um or just this test data was just it's too disparate and the location too or just too far off um there's no potential matches here but if you find potential matches you can actually archive um one one of the records and keep the other um, and if you keep the other you might there might be some information you bring forward uh, from the other one so so maybe it's 90 percent complete but the second record that you're archiving you know maybe said had the veteran you know response and you want to you can bring that forward to the other one so you have one really good record and then get rid of the the, uh, the duplicate so that's that piece um you know as far as you know generating your your report itself so you know it's pretty quick hud point giant report from the giant report from the you know, unsheltered, I can do that. I can do shel sheltered and unsheltered. Well, let's just do the, the unsheltered point in time report without demographic sampling you know, extrapolation right now. Um, and I'm going to do it. Um, and do it. I didn't apply any filters, so they'll do all records. So I'm going to do this as an example. Now, this one's running over something like 1,200 some odd records. So it will take, it'll take a few seconds. Um, you know, the smaller data sizes. Or quicker and the other bigger ones take a little while longer. Um, but what you're going to see is in this case, the shape file look for the region we picked up to be San Diego, where, where I am now. Um, high level um, for that geography is only 23 records because I picked it for the COC. Um, so even though there was a lot more data in there, it's running it for a COC. Um, the drill downs are all there. The, these data quality checks, you, you, you see this is another way to go about looking at your data. Um, and you can go, drill down there. And then if everything looks good, you can go through this. If things look good, you can print the report and download a PDF, send it around, say, hey, does this look good? You know, you have any questions before I hit submit, you can do that. Um, and if we're, if, we're, if we're rocking and rolling, then it's this export results is how you get that data that gets compiled later. So um you know so if i export results that's going to create that results file and again it's going to look similar um and it has for your unsheltered count all the facts and figures that were on that pdf so it's just another way to get the data out without having to take numbers from a pdf and write them down and rekey them somewhere else um you know why that just give you the output to work with and have a you know have a computer program do it so that's that piece. Hey, Matt, it's Kevin. Uh, yeah. If you wanted to go over the duplicate functionality, uh, you can click on link clients over on the left side. So this one will pull up the potential duplicates for the entire activity. Um, and then the button that finds the duplicates is for the specific record you're looking at. So. OK. All right, thank you. Um, all right, so we do have a few potential dupes here. Um, thank you, Kevin, for that. So, you know, a lot of A's and B's, and let's look this, you know, if we wanted to bring a couple in, um, you know, we can go in and we can do, we can compare records. Um, let's just do this one to compare records here. So in this case, you can look at the location. Oh, it looks like it's, you know, it's the same location. And um, so that looks pretty interesting. And who put it in? And you can look at the information. And in this case, it's, it's Sue and Joe. Um, so they, you can just reject it. But, um, you know, if you wanted to, you know, you can start taking information from one and bringing it, bringing it forward. So in this case, I'm not going to bring link them together um, because I looked at it and they don't look like they're the same person. So um, in that case, Kevin, I would just be clicking reject, correct? Uh, yes, correct. You have to click reject and then select the two records again. And you can go ahead and do it because it's just a, yeah. so, um, so, so out of all the, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, just out of all the potential matches, um, you're rejecting these specific two options. So right here, there's only two. Makes sense. But if they were looking at one that, whoops, 
if you're looking at uh, the set of seven, you may only reject like three out of the seven, and the other four might be duplicates. All right. Yeah, something just popped up. We'll take a look into that, but make sure that's fixed. Yeah. Um, so that's that feature. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, the other besides that, you can export the data. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to work with this, um, you can choose, like, do you have custom questions for your point in time count that weren't part of the core? Uh, so you're not going to get them on the report. This is really where that piece would come in. Um, so you can choose uh, custom. And then from here, you, you might already have something described. But if, you, if not, you can go here and you can choose what columns you want to include in the export and you can give it a name. So that way, once you create this export definition, it, you can use it over and over again. So, um, you know, I'm hoping that people that had custom questions will use this and then go back to, you know, and analyze the additional data. That's, this is how you would do that piece. Um, and so you scroll through, say, I want to include this, I want to include this, whatever it is that you want to include in your export. And you could be everything. Um, that's an option too. You save it once it's defined. So, And then you can click export to bring that ex that data for what you selected out. Um, and you can choose to do it all records, um, which would include the archive records, or you can do filtered records. So, um, and so all fields, the base fields are custom. That's really on that piece. Right, I'm not going to do that because, you know, just for the sake of time. All right. Any other questions? Let's see. They can't come up in the chat. That up. Okay. So I don't see any. Is there anything that people need help with that I think other people might help me help with, or any feedback that they want to share? You know, um, again, I can either try to take you off mute, or we can. You can use the chat. All right, well, we'll give it a minute, but I, while I'm doing that, I do want to just emphasize, we're going to be sending out an email just so people can see the show the way app. Um, you know, every community is different, but we work with several communities in California and Texas where they have, a, you know, in particular, you know, some communities have more prevalence of, of people living on the streets. And um, it really just has been um, something that has been um, really a, a focus of ours and a mission to try to help uh, take the same tech for the point in time count and make it so we can use it year round uh, and help you know, get people connected. Uh, so that's going to be May 25th. We'd love to share uh, what we've been up to. Um, you know, I think we're going to be looking at uh, package pricing and discount pricing for people that uh, communities that use both uh, counting us in the point and uh, show the way. Um, and, you know, we want you to be early adopters of it and then still have a chance to refine uh, some of that core functionality too. Um, you know, we're never done. The same with the point in time count, we, we ask for feedback here. Um, what we have now, I think is really impressive. Um, actually, I know, you know, and I'm hearing that from other people that are, have already launched, um, which is awesome. Um, but it's always can be refined and made better. Um, so, you know, the early adopters and people that are already using our tech and know us, um, you know, we want, we kind of want to, you know, start off with, uh, people that know and like us and vice versa. So, uh, that's the goal of that. Um, and then for the point in time, you know, you're not alone. I know sometimes it feels that way, especially with COVID, we're all like doing our thing. Um, but you know, if you want half hour, an hour, um, you know, a walkthrough, like you really want us to help you get those, the numbers together. Um, make sure you're doing it right and have another set of, set of eyes, um, you know, count us in. So that's help desk at SyntechSolutions.com is probably the best way. Um, that way, you, you know, you know, whoever's available will jump on it. Um, you know, but, um, again, I just wanted to thank you for inviting us to help support your work. Um, if you are interested in getting your 2022, uh, contract, 
um, you know, in place. So, you, you know, you have it all locked in and don't have to worry about it. Um, you know, reach out, you know, to me personally, um, you know, I, I tend to, to take on a lot of that, um, administrative work. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I wish you all the best. I thank you for joining us and, uh, you know, please reach out anytime with that. I'm going to, uh, you know, I'm going to sign off for the day and, and, and wish you all well and may the force be with you. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, take care and thank you.